one machine to the other to the target. And you can see how the, they start swinging out of phase in the nature of that out of phase swing, or that they drag together by observing that point in there. Now, this is, was a difficult experiment to do because there's a lot of mechanical variables, but it took us two or three months to get this set up. And we did videotape the dragging of one against the other. And we did notice that the TV camera, which used a Vidicon and was suspended over the rotating flywheels, that the, the lag in the screen increased, which meant that the inertial effect of the flywheels was affecting the recombination time of the, of the holes in the electrons in the photocathode as well. So this is another little experiment. Then going on, this is an experiment where we started to collide them, and this is the geometry of the how long the cores and things were. Here is the measurements made of the different orientations and how they swang, whether they were energized or not energized. There's three possible orientations of a gyroscope. It swings either along the axis, or it swings in the plane of rotation, or it swings with the plane of rotation perpendicular to the surface of the Earth. And in each case, there was a slightly different swing and this is the result of thousands and thousands of measurements we did. Now, also what we did was the collision of the non-rotating object with the rotating one. Now, this elastic collision experiment was uh, suggested by Edward Purcell Park when we first approached him on the fact that there might be differences in the properties of rotating objects. And just to give you an idea here, that you have two machines, each one weighs two 30-pound flywheels, each machine weighs 234 pounds. The changes we're looking at in the, in the collision experiment are parts of 100. Now, what this means is in the collision of rotating atoms, where we have what we would call conservation of energy, we find that this does not apply if, if, if the mechanical model of rotation applies to the motion of atoms. So in the collision of a non-rotating object with a rotating one, or the rotating with a non-rotating one, momentum and energy are not conserved in these collisions. Now, going on, we then tried to figure out what we could do usefully with these phenomena. Now, we know, for instance, we were talking about space drives and anti-gravity earlier this afternoon. The space drive is a thing which propels itself by pushing against space itself. The anti-gravity machine is a thing which actually works against the gravitational field of the Earth and just moves away from the center of the Earth. This is a machine which depends upon the variable inertia effect of precession. So you have like the same effect you have on a screwdriver that you push an automatic screwdriver in one direction, you get a rotation while you're pushing, and then you, when you pull back, there is no rotation. So while you're pushing and turning at the same time, the machine locks in space, or its inertial mass increases, and you can push against it, and then you can pull it against, pull it back without rotation, and then you get low inertia. So you can create a variable inertia space drive out of the precession of a gyroscope in this manner. And the basic phenomena is the discovery that the precession of a gyroscope has a variable inertia effect, or what we call locking in space, as a mathematician called it. Let's go on now. Here is a very interesting experiment that we did, and I want to show this in a little bit more uh, detail here. I got an idea that we had to have in any physics experiment, if you're talking about a new field or a new phenomenon, there has to be an archetypal test, which is the electron experiment or the neutron experiment or whatever you're looking for. Well, the archetypal test for the inertial field is the bringing near the object of the uh, tuning fork. And the tuning fork, whose motion is determined by the inertia of the times, is affected by bringing near a flywheel. Now, in this setup, we had an Accutron watch, which is, used to be made about 20 years ago in this country, it used a 360-cycle fork, I think, in it, yes. With the, with the tines arranged so they vibrated back and forth vertically along the axis above the 30-pound pound flywheel, turning 7,600 RPM, completely shielded, both of them doubly shielded. And in this setup, we we'll synchronize the second hands, run the electric clock from the external stabilized source, 
and that we could get a situation where the second hands tracked to the extent that after four hours, the uh, Accutron was a quarter of a second faster than the clock, which was in the range of accuracy of the watch. But when you ran the flywheels, the Accutron slowed down one second, or nine, almost one second, nine tenths of a second in 17 minutes, which is 1,000 seconds. So it's almost one part in a thousand that it slowed down when operated over the axis of the flywheel. So this so shows you that in the same way that if you have a charged object, the charge is in the space around the object, a hot object, the heat is in the space around the object, magnetic object, the magnetism is in the space, a radioactive object, and so forth, that the forces in the rotating object, the flywheel, exert an effect on the space around the object, and if the inertial mass of this rotating flywheel increases for experiments along the axis and decreases for experiments in the plane of rotation, then that same property would be imposed on anything that was moved. That is, motions of the mechanical objects in the plane of rotation near this object will have their inertia reduced, and motions in this direction will have their inertia increased. So it's a real field, and we call it the odd field. And the word OD is the old term coming from von Reichenbach in Germany, which I already invented just, I guess, like I did the head machine, invented by Faraday. But it was the name of one of my students who was with me. And the O and the D are old field and the poem, and that's why we call it the odd field. But that's what the name is I give to the inertial field of a rotating object. Now, interestingly enough, I had a thought after I read the Accutron manual, which comes with the watch. And they tell you there that if you hold a tuning fork vertical like this, it will vibrate 4.5 seconds a day faster or slower than horizontal. And it got, they charge it off to some gravitational effect, but I said to myself, you know, I've always wondered why plants and grass and everything grow vertical. Why do they grow vertical? Is it the light that they're following? Or is it some other property? And it occurred to me there may be an inertial anisotropy to the gravitational field of the Earth, such that vibrations in the, radi in the radial direction are just slightly high inertia than vibrations in the parallel to the surface of the Earth. So how do we test this? We got some grass, and we put it in an aluminum pie plate with soil and mounted in a piece of cardboard over a 78 RPM turntable, which was an old photograph, aluminum turntable. And we did the two experiments where we grew the grass over the turntable when it was still and when it was rotating. Now, in the rotating sense, this is what happens. And can you make that go backwards there yes, so sir. people can see? Non-rotating, go ahead and rotating. No, one more. Rotating. Now, interestingly enough, and I, I think this is true of all scientific explorations, when you are operating in the field of the unknown, you are operating with very simple equipment, and you're looking at effects which are on the level of discernibility. And that's what distinguishes scientists from non-scientists, that operating on the level of discernibility, they notice something, and then they, just, they, they, they describe an experiment to somehow bring this forth in some way, and then some new effect is, is, is discovered. So we were out in the country, and we had very simple apparatus like pendulums, tuning forks, electric clocks, grass, old phonograph turntables. And out of this, we got some sort of interesting insights into the physics of rotation. Now, this is a graph of how the control grass grew and how the rotating grass grew, which grew a little faster. And this is the result of a summer, hours elapsed since planting of seeds, and we did a very careful study on what happened. So this is another example of something where 